just like, just in general, like building up strength. So it's not necessarily like being of a, a higher one rep max, but if I can like do more for a five rep max or an eight rep max or like, you know, I build up my like front squat strength or like press strength, like that's all pretty good as an indicator that I have a bigger base to peak off of. You know, so if I've got like two lifters and one can do, you know, 300 for five reps, and the other one can do 315 reps. I don't know what the lift is, but I'm, I'm betting that that one who does 300 for 15 can do more for one. It's like a pretty general example, but you get the idea. So we're just, we're not really worrying so much about like how much you can max for one here. We're just building up a general base of strength. So you're gonna be, uh, in terms of like lifts, moving more from the like assistance and supplemental towards like supplemental competition style lifts. Um, uh, and similarly, like a, a compared to a hypertrophy phase, less like assistance or accessory movements, so ones that like don't really mimic the lifts, you know, less emphasis on those. Weight-wise, usually 70 to 85% for most stuff, um, and that's gonna mean, obviously, total, uh, total reps is gonna come down. And so for like core lifts, usually, excuse me, in this phase, like three to six reps, um, and that's where those basic like five by five programs and stuff come along. So they sit kind of right in the middle there, and that works really, really well for a lot of people a lot of the time. So in terms of like total reps, this one, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Prolipin's table, but that's where I would be going for total reps. Um, but usually somewhere between like 15 to 30 reps for core lifts in like a given training session. And the final piece is that idea of like peaking or going for like a, a heavy one rep max. So my favorite way to, to do this, I, I follow sort of a, a block style periodization, but Basically, piggybacking off a strength phase, you're gonna run a bit of a peak and then a taper. So we'll talk about what both those are, but the idea is that, all right, we've got like a big base of general strength, we work it up so we get like a real high peak, do a little bit of recovery so then I can perform the best that I can possibly can. So when I'm going into a competition, I got a couple of goals and like, I feel like most of you guys, if you're lifters, should have the same goals. I wanna reduce fatigue as much as possible. So I wanna be as fresh as I can be on the competition day. If I'm like beat up and tired, even if I'm really, really strong, I'm probably not gonna be able to perform as well as I could if I was like recovered and fresh. But I also wanna like maintain strength as much as possible. So let's say I'm like, I'm going through like real hard training, I'm two weeks out, um, you know, I'm feeling pretty beat up and, and, and uh, like I'm, I'm, anyways, I'm strong, but I'm, I'm beat up and I'm tired. If I like take those two weeks completely off, I don't do anything. I may not be at my best at that competition. I'll be like really recovered, I'll be really fresh, but I'll, I'll have spent so long not lifting that my actual strength will come down as well. So we wanna be able to like keep enough of a stimulus in there so that I still stay strong, you still stay strong, but you uh, allow yourself to, to recover, you reduce fatigue. And then the final idea, so we wanna maximize performance. This just means that like our training needs to be pretty specific during this period of time. So this is like the, the point where we should be doing a lot of competition lists and very little of anything else because that's our goal. We want to be as proficient as possible at hitting those competition lists. So, like I said, that's basically the idea of uh, we've got a peaking of taper phase. The idea with the peaking phase, we're transitioning that general strength into like specific strength. So we tend to increase intensity and decrease volume. Again, like I said, those things have to like relate to each other. Um, so this is where you may be hitting, or maybe well, you would be hitting weights upwards of, of 90%, sometimes as, as heavy as 100%, you know, doing like PRs or close to PRs, like stuff like that in training. Um, and because you're going pretty heavy with the weights, you're gonna have to go correspondingly lower with the total amount of work. And because we're going really heavy, fatigue management, working on recovery becomes more important. So if I'm in like a hypertrophy phase where I'm just like getting a pump on and stuff, I can go into a training session feeling like less than 100% and I can still like put some weight on the bar. Like 60% is, I'm not gonna miss it. So maybe it just doesn't feel great, but I can still get work in. But if I come in to like hit 95% and I don't really feel great, it's not gonna go well. At the very, like I mean, I can miss it. I you could so have a technique breakdown that cause an injury. So it becomes really important to be fresh and recovered when you're trying to hit those heavy, heavy weights, or at least fresh enough and recovered enough that you're able to, to do it. So this is where you may start manipulating like recovery days in there. So if I was gonna train, let's say I got two, two squat days a week, maybe one of them is really heavy and the other one's like pretty light. So that I'm still practicing, but that light day is just, it doesn't really fatigue me. So instead I'm, I'm as fresh as possible for that heavy day. And so that's just kind of important to keep in mind. And other things just in terms of like, 
you know, if I, if I have, even if I say I have a planned workout on Friday, but for whatever reason I'm not quite recovered enough, that's, this is a time where you may want to push that back rather than trying to like plow through it.